Okay, so, um, yeah, basically we're at Chichester Rail Station now, uh, waiting for our train back to Brighton. Um, and kind of as we discussed earlier off camera, um, yeah. what are your thoughts, generally speaking, on the recent results of the Champions League draw and the FA Cup quarter final results? Altogether, nothing too surprising, mm. I would say. Um, the teams all emerged in roughly the positions that uh, were to be expected, except perhaps for a couple such as Saints, who uh, did a little better than expected, and maybe some like Crystal Palace, who did a little bit worse. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Southampton have really kind of sort of like dra dra dragged themselves out of a bit of a mire recently since mm. they employed that Hasenhutl uh, guy as the manager. Yeah. Uh, he's just kind of worked wonders, really, with what was a bit of a lopsided squad. And now, yes. even though they're out of both cup competitions, like, he, they doing not terribly in the league. True. And uh, their game against, I think it was uh, Hotspur, if I'm not much mistaken. Tottenham. Where, Tottenham Hotspur, exactly. Where they, uh, or Spurs, if we're going to be particularly colloquial about it. Um, yes, that was a particular surprise. One doesn't win against Tottenham Hotspur particularly easily. No. And, of course, it was emotionally resonant because uh, the current manager of uh, Spurs is a former Saints manager. Yeah, he was like, he was kind of like one who kicked into gear your recent like era of like, you know, being one of those teams that scrapes around the Europa League places and mm. kind of made you into the force that you were. Um, Indeed. I, even though you wasn't there for like the, you know, for like you know big events like getting to the League Cup final in 2017 or beating Inter Milan in the Europa League, it's like he. Yeah. He did kind of lay, lay the groundwork for that before he went to Tottenham. Hmm. Um, another, I, I, I kind of think the thing is like lots of people have been saying about the FA Cup quarterfinals that like, um, like the way that some teams performed was kind of a big shock. But I would agree with you in the sense that it was like kind of to be expected because you know, Man City, for example, they're really late into the season. They're competing still on three fronts. And so the fact that they had to come back from 2 0 down to win against Swansea was not really hard to see. Although I would say I was a bit disappointed by the fact that the goal, the game was decided by a Man City goal that arguably shouldn't have stood. Because I mm. think it was just slightly offside. That's a possible, yeah. I haven't seen that particular match, so I can't uh, qualify, I uh, can't sort of give a qualified opinion. However, I would say that uh, the state of play in most of these matches has been somewhat lacking. I can't think of any particularly spectacular moments or manoeuvres in any of the matches, particularly the, uh, I believe it was the Arsenal versus Man United game on yeah. Saturday. Um, I watched most of the first half. No, it was of that. on Sunday. It was on, that was on the Sunday. Not this Sunday, just gone by, but the one before. One before. Yeah. Uh, who did Man U play on Saturday though? They played Wolves in the that's FA Cup. That's true. Wolverhampton. That's right. Yeah. Um, the game versus them, apart from some very good play from the Wolves midfielders, I don't really recall seeing anything all that spectacular. No, and I mean, ended in a draw, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was a two-one win for oh, Wolves. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I would agree in the sense that, like, the only real stand-up moments were really just, like, kind of the goals themselves, because, um, I mean, especially, like, for the, the second Wolves goal, it's just such a brilliant piece of, like, individual play from the, uh, I can't remember his, uh, oh, Diogo Jota. That's right, yeah. Um, where he just kind of, like, just skins one Man United player, goes round another, and then just slams it into the far bottom corner. Mm. And it's a really well-taken shot, um... But yeah, I mean, apart from that, it was just kind of a bit dull. Same as well for the Palace versus Watford quarterfinal, even though it was an emotional farewell for the Watford goalkeeper Gomez. And um, the only one I was really shocked by was Brighton's win in the quarterfinal uh, over. Um, oh, who was it? Um, oh, it, no. well, it wasn't Portsmouth. No, no. Portsmouth were knocked out way earlier in the yeah, FA Cup. No. But um, they. Out of all of the teams that went through to the semi-finals in this year's FA Cup, I thought that Brighton had possibly had the most up-and-down season mm. uh, compared to Watford, Man City, and... Um, um, oh, wait, what's the point? Wolves. Um, yeah. But 
yeah, I mean, theirs was probably the most boring match, but the shock for the shock of that was simply the fact that they got to the mm. semi-finals at all. So even though I would agree with you generally that all the games this weekend were kind of like arguably formalities, yeah, like that was the one that shocked me the most because Brighton haven't had an amazing season, and the fact that they've now, now mm. FA Cup semi-finalists at Wembley was a bit of a shock for me. Mm. Before we sort of conclude our thoughts on this, uh, any thoughts on uh, the German football league or any of the other nations' tournaments? Um, the only one I've really paid a lot of attention to recently, I think, is the German Bundesliga. Um, yeah. All I can say is I just really hope Dortmund win the league title this season. Yeah. Bayern do play good football uh, this season. But it would yeah. just be nice <sighs> just for Borussia Dortmund just to break the hegemony that they've had for the last few years. You know, no yeah. other team other than Bayern have won it in the last seven years. So it would just be interesting to see someone else win it for a change. Mm. As I recall, uh, Dortmund did beat uh, the Hessians in the last round. So uh, yeah, and they they're usually a bit of a bogey team for a lot of the bigger sides in Germany. So they could still clinch it, but yeah. it's mm, like the thing is, I think they were like twelve points clear in like December. Whereas like now, mm. I think if they do win the league, it's literally going to come down to like a couple of points. Yeah, indeed. But as of yet, everything in the German league is sort of again as it should be. Mm. All the teams are in the positions going into the semi-finals and finals that we could be expecting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, back to uh, English football. What's your prediction for the finals of the FA Cup um, and so, Champions League? And all so the upcoming semi-finals of the FA Cup, I think. I think the final will probably be Wolves versus Man City. Hmm. Watford have an excellent manager, Brighton are well organised, but their level of quality just isn't as big as Wolves or Man City. So unless like one of the semi-finals is Wolves versus Man City, I think the semi, I think the final itself will be Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Manchester City, just based purely yeah. on the fact that they both have two of the best managers in England. Uh, Watford employ most of the Portuguese national team, and yeah. that's probably why they're exactly. so good. And Manchester City are just like a footballing empire now at this point, so yeah. they'll probably they'll definitely get to the final, I think. Yeah, I mean. With uh, Arsenal, Chelsea and Man United more or less out of the way mm. at this point, I would agree with your conclusion. Now, I would tentatively point to Wal um, uh, Watford sorry, as being the more likely winner. What, the FA Cup? No, no, the other one. Wait, sorry, not Watford, got, um, uh, the other one. Um, uh, Man City. Man City I for think, the Champions League. Yeah, I think Man City over Wolverhampton. Um... I think Man City will win over Wolverhampton in the FA Cup and I would probably fancy them favourites mm. from the Champions League as well yeah um, that's where the smart money is but you never know the thing is though they've got like even though Spurs have struggled against Man City in the last few seasons they could fall in the quarterfinals of the Champions League this season because Man City are that good so um, I don't know it's a train to London I think yeah right? it's Pretty, pretty noisy, but um, I think as the quarterfinals, it proposes some like really interesting like, prospects. I mean, mm. Ajax getting to the quarterfinals was a big shock when they beat Real Madrid, yeah. um, but they are up against probably the best defensive team in Europe in the form of Juventus. Mm. So it was kind of a bit up in the air. The only, I mean, like I thought, I think I could have easily predicted what's happening with the Bundesliga and the FA Cup. As for the Champions League, um, I really don't know because even though I think Man City are most likely going to win it, hmm. there's so many like been so many weird, shocking results this season in the Champions League that I really can't say who will. Um, even though I probably would put my money on either the Juventus or Manchester City. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not as well informed about uh, the uh, Champions League. Um, as I am about uh, the FA Cup, but mm. uh, I would tentatively agree with your conclusion. Yeah, it's more likely to be Juventus. Uh, as I recall, Milan is out of the running. Milan were in the Europa League anyway, I think, to begin with. So. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I think they nearly got Champions League football like late in the league last season, but then they <laughs> lost the last few league games and they had to contend themselves with the Europa League, or as it oh, right, used to be yeah. known, the UEFA Cup. Um, mm. I think. So. 
I think Inter Milan got Champions League on the last day of last season, but they then dropped into the Europa League this season. So, hmm. yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of the up in the air. Like, that's, thing is, though, yeah. even, even though, like, um, even though making clearer predictions makes for more exciting football content, I do like the idea of it being less easy to predict to, in, in the sense that make it more exciting to watch. Indeed, yes. I mean, as we were discussing earlier, a common complaint about football, mostly from uh, fans of American sports, um, is that uh, um, it's a little rigid, the mm. hierarchy of the teams. However, as we kind of saw in uh, the uh, replays of historic matches that we were watching in the pub, yeah. um, things do change just uh, over a lengthier time period. And in many ways, that means that... Uh, expectations can be subverted going in. Yeah. It's like playing blackjack versus poker. Yeah. yeah. It's like... I, like... I understand the criticism, but I do still think that football is the greatest sport on the planet because it's just such a diverse game that can bring about any sort of range of emotions and uh, conclusions. Mm. Uh, yeah, no, that's... That's what I think, anyway. Yeah, well, we'll just have to see you then, won't we? Yeah, I'll... And in about, uh, what, like, a uh, month's time, isn't it? But then it'll all be over? In, um, in, in the next couple of months, next anyway. couple of months, OK. Yeah. Well, then in about three months' time, uh, we can look back on this and see how we got everything completely wrong and uh, Watford actually won the FA Cup. And, like, Ajax win the Champions League and... Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, like Spurs. Uh, Carter wins uh, the full spy league. And, or like how Spurs managed to catch up on Liverpool and Man City and win the English League title. But yeah. anyway, that's kind of for the future. Yeah. I, might, I might upload this bit separately on another channel, actually, but we'll, we'll wait see. and see. Anyway, thank you for appearing here on um, not BBC Sport. Thank you for having me, not Gary Lineker. Thanks, not Alan Shearer. So awkward. Right. Yeah. See you right. later. Bye. <laughs>